After Indonesia finally gained its independence from the Dutch, they passionately supported the independence of Malaysia. The British had had a large and important colony in what is now Malaysia and Singapore, and they had relatively small colonies in Sarawak, Brunei and Sabah. The year is 1957, and the British agreed to oversee the formation of Malaysia as an independent country. This, in their view, should include all their former colonies. But the president of the newly formed Indonesia protested. He saw those lands as territory of the greater Indonesia, and he was willing to put up a fight. This is the confrontasi with hindsight. The first proposal for a federation of Malaysia was announced in 1961. Indonesia initially didn't raise any objections. It was until they caught wind of a planned revolt in Brunei, which was against joining the federation, when Indonesia got involved. The British sent troops to quell the unrest to proceed with forming the federation. But Indonesia poured oil on the fire and issued formal statements in support of Brunei's independence. This heated up an already tense relationship between Malaysia and Indonesia. Their presidents came together a few months later to discuss a diplomatic solution. They agreed to hold a referendum, and both parties agreed to respect the wish of the people. But only a few weeks later, the president of Malaysia signed an agreement with the British to form the Federation of Malaysia on August 31st, 1963, before the referendum was held. This outraged the Indonesian government, and they responded by announcing the Crush Malaysia campaign. The tone was set. Sukarno's government coined the term confrontasi or confrontation to describe their policy towards Malaysia from this moment onwards. It was a carefully crafted description to avoid actually declaring war against Britain. This marked the beginning of the military operations. The British justified the formation of Malaysia on multiple grounds. The peoples of northern Borneo were culturally distinct from those on the Malay Peninsula, but a survey from the United Nations found support in both Sabah and Sarawak to join the Federation. Great Britain had administered these lands for a long time, and Indonesia had recently expressed territorial claims. For the people, joining Malaysia was more secure. They had long desired to have a stronger voice, and they were promised by the British to participate in the process of building the federation. This was reason enough for some to prefer joining Malaysia. Brunei is a wholly different story. I'm going to make a separate video about this, so make sure to subscribe to my channel right now. You have nothing to lose. The economic potential for harvesting timber, mining minerals and exploiting the rich oil and gas fields of northern Borneo would give the federation an edge. The Brits intended to maintain a military presence on the island and sought to preserve its influence in the region. To them it all made sense to include this territory into the federation, but to Indonesia this could only be interpreted as neo-colonialism. The British had historically put diverse ethnic groups between the same country lines to divide and to conquer. Indonesia had a completely different ideology. Sukarno's vision was that of a greater Indonesia, which included all Malay-speaking people within the same nation. They had just won a UN ruling that led to West New Guinea being included into their territory. Borneo in this vision was part of the country. Some indigenous communities, such as the Dayak people, had ancestral ties to different parts of Borneo, and Sukarno wanted to include all their historic lands within the same borders. On 
only days after the federation was formalized, Indonesian troops crossed the border and defeated the Malaysian troops with overwhelming strength. This was the first attack of many to come. They entered the country through the porous mountainous and jungle borders and attacked Malaysia in a guerrilla style warfare. The Malaysian forces struck back. They often transported small numbers of troops by helicopter deep into the rainforest where they tracked the Indonesian soldiers and set up an ambush. This led Malaysian soldiers to often cross the borders into Indonesian territory, but their troops also consisted of British and Commonwealth soldiers, including Australians and New Zealanders. They were fighting on Indonesian territory and this could never become public knowledge. If the general public would know that Commonwealth troops were fighting in Indonesia, it might force them to declare a full-scale war. In the meantime, Indonesia opened a second front on the Malay Peninsula. They raided the coastal areas, they parachuted soldiers from missions deeper land inwards, and they launched an attack that targeted the infrastructure connecting Singapore to the state of Johor. During this time, there were several large bombings in Singapore, which culminated with the large bombing of a 10-story building in central Singapore. The building housed the Australian High Commission and the Japanese consulate. The conflict was dangerously close to escalating into a full-blown war. Malaysian and Commonwealth forces were fiercely resisting the Indonesian campaigns. And after some time, they were gaining the upper hand. But the conflict really changed course after Indonesia's internal struggles worsened. The economy was suffering and the country's leadership was divided on the way forward. President Sukarno had a strong base of support from the Communist Party, but in October 1965, they tried to overthrow him. In their attempt, they killed a large number of top military officials, but they failed to reach the president. The uprising was quelled that same day, under the leadership of General Suharto. After this, Sukarno stepped down, and Suharto became Indonesia's new president. For the conflict with Malaysia, this was a major turning point. Suharto was concerned about the communist presence in Indonesia. They had failed to overthrow the government, but still had about 3 million members. He decided to swallow his pride and to stop wasting Indonesia's valuable resources and manpower on the confrontasi. This intensified Indonesia's persecution of communists and it led to Indonesia and Malaysia signing a peace agreement just a few months later. Check out my video about Indonesia's road to independence by clicking on the video on the left or pick whatever YouTube suggests here on the right.